Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to continue in Unit 7 discussing cities and urban land use. If you remember the last time we were talking, in our last video we were talking about how to define a city, or not really the city, but we were talking about how to define what does it mean to be urban. And today we're going to be looking a little bit at the, uh, the origin and evolution of cities. And we're just going to talk about this briefly, talk about some of the original purposes for cities uh, and their emergence, and talk about how some of that changes a little bit over time. So when we get the hearths of cities, uh, initially when cities uh, began to emerge, or first began to emerge, uh, they began to emerge uh, for one of three purposes for the most part. Of course, you really couldn't have the emergence of cities until you had uh, agricultural production taking place uh, in order to sustain a larger population. And of course, if you think about people living in a city, uh, they're not agriculturalists, so they're going to be depending on the agriculturalists who live outside of the city in order to sustain their lifestyle. Uh, so agriculture is going to be really important to the development of the city, which is why when you look at the hearths of cities, where cities first, to be, uh, first begin to develop, we also find that uh, those are also our agricultural hearths, because again, you really can't have the development of the city until you have agricultural production taking place. Plus, uh, prior to agriculture, you know, it was a hunter-gatherer society, and so it really made no sense to sit down and to develop a city and develop complex civilization. So that's going to be the thing that's necessary in order to develop uh, a city in, uh, in the beginning. Uh, so first of all, one of the things that we note is that all cities are administrative centers. And what we mean by that is uh, cities are going to be, be places where people of power exist. Uh, whether this is a king, whether this is a religious figure, uh, you know, whoever it happens to be. But the, the city is always going to act as the hub, the hub for power, the hub of the administration those who make the rules, uh, and you know that's just the way that uh, that's still just kind of the way that it's worked over time. Uh, you know, this is uh, if you want access to the per the person that's important. Uh, you know, that person is there living in the city, and people tend to congregate around that, almost like the king's court. And so, uh, you know, that's just the way that cities are going to function. And we'll talk more about that as we move on. But here are uh, some examples of cities that acted more as agricultural centers. And what I mean by that is cities that kind of emerge around agricultural production. And uh, their initial function really is to protect uh, the people that are living in the surrounding areas and also to, uh, to protect uh, the agricultural production that's taking place. Um, plus you have trade that's going on a lot of times between the agriculturalists uh, that are growing food and the people that are in the city, and a lot of times, initially in these situations, uh, it's it's kind of a closed system or a closed network of trade, uh, because there's not really a whole lot of extensive trading that's going on initially between uh, people of far off cities, but rather the people that are living outside of the city and the people that are living inside of the city. Uh, the next uh, couple of places where we have hearths uh, of cities are going to be uh, cities that are situated along trading routes, and you see this a lot with uh, the Greeks, the Romans, and the Phoenicians in Europe. Uh, but as trading routes begin to crisscross uh, between Europe and Asia, you begin to see cities crop up uh, that are along these trading routes. And, and you know, very much like the agricultural center, uh, they're places of trade, they're places of commerce. And so people that are coming to, uh, to exchange their goods uh, begin to congregate in these areas, and then cities begin to crop up. Uh, it could be because uh, the cities were a certain distance away, and that's how far someone can travel in a day. And so, in order uh, in order to find protection and shelter, uh, a city established there. Maybe it was a port city, and so this would be a place where people congregated to move across a body of water, uh, and therefore a city cropped up uh, in those particular places. Or it could be a place that was uh, almost strictly of religious significance. If you look at a lot of cities, especially in uh, especially in the America, South America, and Mexico, uh, the, Azte the Aztec and the Incas, several of their cities were almost exclusively uh, developed as religious centers. And then some of the uh, the commerce and trade that went on uh, as a result of that, uh, as a result of that religious significant, the religious significance of that place, people coming and going a lot of times to to make sacrifices or to uh, to pay homage or respect to a particular god or or a religious figure. So when we look at uh, the initial origins of cities and where they uh, or why they begin to emerge, initially again, 
They emerge as agricultural centers, they emerge along trade routes, or they emerge because of their religious significance. And remember, within all of these, all three of those, each of them are going to exist as administrative centers, where people of power or people of significance are going to be. And so just a couple of examples again. Um, you know, Greek city-states that existed here in Greece and in the Anatolian Peninsula there, and a lot of them were along trade routes of running from, from Europe into Asia. Uh, and this isn't maybe necessarily the best map, so I apologize for that, but, uh, you know, the Romans, uh, very, uh, very prominent for the development of their road network, and uh, the roads are what connected the empire, and a lot of cities were established. A lot of cities were established along the trade networks, uh, and so um, that's where they, that's where those came from. And then the Phoenicians, the Phoenicians were extensive traders. Uh, and they established several cities along the Mediterranean uh, that were part of their trade network that existed. So again, these are just different examples of cities that existed as a part of a trade network. Uh, when we look at the pre-industrial city, uh, again, I was telling you how cities were going to be surrounded by agriculture. And again, that's so that the people living in the cities could sustain uh, their particular way of life. If they, I mean, if they were not agriculturalists, um, and the cities existed as a place to exchange goods and services. A lot of times, a lot of times between the people again that were living, uh, that were living in the farms, uh, and the people that were living in the cities, they could exchange goods and services with each other. And again, they did exist as as trading centers. And so, a lot of times, I like to draw kind of this diagram to get, help you. I uh, get kind of an understanding of what exactly this would look like. So a lot of times you'd have the city here in the center, and I apologize for the bad drawing, but this drawing with this pad sometimes is kind of difficult. So a lot of times you have the larger city, some of these smaller villages that would exist around the city, um, and these villagers, instead of connecting to the different villages, the way that they would connect is there are the, these routes that would move directly into the city, and so this way the villagers could bring their wares, could bring their goods into the city, they could get the things that they needed, uh, and then of course they were interacting with each other uh, within the city. And again, also the city a lot of times acted as a place of protection uh, in times of war and in times of conflict, things like that. Now, when we look at the pre-industrial city, and of course after uh, when the industrialization comes, cities end up becoming centers of industry. We're going to see that these actually begin to decline with the Roman Empire, uh, and I guess decline with the Roman Empire, decline with the fall of the Roman Empire in 410 A.D. Uh, and the reason for that, and of course this is in Europe, so I guess maybe I shouldn't say around the world, but in Europe they decline with the fall of the Roman Empire because the Roman em Empire produced stability within Europe, uh, and so it was that stability that kept the trade networks uh, safe and secure, and a lot of these cities were established and, and prominent and important because of the trade that flowed through them. Well, if there were no more trade networks, uh, then the cities couldn't sustain themselves, and so the people that were living in the cities really had no way to survive because they couldn't trade with anybody, they couldn't sell their goods, uh, and so a lot of them ended up leaving the cities, and so the cities less, lost their level of importance and prominence after the fall of the Roman Empire. Now we're going to find that the pre-industrial city uh, begins to reemerge as a place of importance with the age of exploration and the age of mercantilism. Uh, during this age, there are some political uh, events that begin to take place. Uh, we have the emergence of stronger kings uh, that began to happen uh, during uh, the Middle Ages uh, and into the European Renaissance, uh, which is going to take us into the age of exploration and mercantilism. And trade becomes much more important during this period. And it's not just trade between European countries, but trade between the Old World and the New World. And so one of the things we begin to see is that we begin to see a shift of important cities from cities that are along overland trade routes to cities that are on coastal uh, coastal areas as a part of overseas trade networks. And by the year 1500, um, we end up with this uh, this geographic shape of uh, cities, and this is a term that is difficult for me to really even talk about because it seems kind of silly. It seems almost made up, but it's a term, so I'll tell you the term. Uh, and then we can move on with our lives. And so by the, by the year 1500, we end up with this geographic shape that uh, I guess geographers like to call the urban banana. Hmm. Anyway, so the urban banana just describes the geographic distribution of cities uh, in this crescent shape starting in London to the west, moving to Tokyo in the east. And I guess it's just the, it's the idea that 
you have kind of this line of cities that begins to emerge. And there's got to be something that ties all of those things uh, together. But that's by the year 1500. Um, and so here are a couple of maps. Now you'll notice that this is in the urban banana. This is actually what's called the blue banana. Same concept, same idea, uh, but the banana is turned the other way. And this one is blue. So go figure. When we look at the pre-industrial cities, as I was uh, mentioning earlier, the pre-industrial city was going to be a city of power, and this is a, typically the city itself. Uh, you would have uh, the cent the city itself would actually be the center of all three of these elements. It'd be the center of political power, economic power, as well as cultural power. Early in the year, I believe it was in the culture unit, we talked about this idea of primate city. We'll talk about this more later. Uh, but this is where really these primate cities begin to emerge because what begins to happen a lot of times these pre-industrial cities start off as places of political power and as a result of them being a place of political power they then shift into a place of economic power because wherever the politically important person is the economically important people are going to be as well because they want to be tied to the politically important people and then as a result of that this is going to be the place of cultural importance if you if you studied uh, history at all and you talk about the renaissance talk about cities as a place of uh, the rebirth of art and learning in the Renaissance period. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that politically and economically important people are in cities. Uh, and the, the, in fact, these people of political and economic importance are making the cultural decisions in terms of what is considered to be high culture, high fashion. And then anybody who wants their artwork to be picked up, if you look at any of the Renaissance masters, they have to get, they have to tie themselves to people who are politically and economically important, and we'll take them on. Uh, we'll take them on as a patron. Um, and so, uh, the, the pre-industrial cities are going to be those concentrations of power in all three of those. And again, typically form, forming forming in what's called as a primate city. Uh, again, and then you also typically what happens uh, in this particular situation: cities are going to be combined into commercial as well as residential areas. And there's really no distinction in these early cities and places uh, of commerce and places of residency. And in fact, uh, in these pre-industrial cities, a lot of the people who are living in cities uh, would have a shop below, and then they would live either uh, behind the shop or above the shop. And so there was uh, typically uh, the commercial and residential sections of town were not distinguished from one another, were kind of um, concentrated together. Really, the only the only distinction within the city is uh, the only distinction in the city was where the people of various classes lived. Uh, the wealthy in pre-industrial cities tended to live towards the city center, whereas the poor tend to live towards the rim of the city for a variety of different reasons. Really, uh, the rich tended to be the first ones in the city, so the city kind of built itself around them, uh, as well as the center of the city tended to be the safest place of the city in case of attack, uh, whereas the poor would come in uh, after and they were there a lot of times to service the rich or to try and uh, to gain the, uh, the benevolence of the rich and they lived in the places that were uh, the I guess maybe the most precarious when it came to safety and in fact if you look at some ancient cities we're talking ancient cities some people actually lived inside the walls of cities so typically not the safest place to be uh, but anyway that, is, that just talks a little bit about city structures in the pre-industrial city. So I hope you found that to be helpful. That's all we're going to have time for this time. If you have any questions, of course, leave those in the comment box below. And I hope to see you next time.